Super Star Destroyers, Super Capitals, and Dreadnought classes, all of these refer to the colossal warships of the Star Wars universe. In Empire War, Super Star Destroyers, otherwise known as SSDs, are tools meant to directly turn the war in your favour. Just like the Executor, the Eclipse, and the Secutor in Star Wars lore, their presence has the potential to secure an entire sector if used properly. In this video, we show you how to keep your SSDs alive, as well as to get the absolute most out of these massive ships. So, without any further ado, let's dive right into this video. First things first is what SSD to buy. Dreadnought class ships may not immediately be available, as you will have to unlock the ability to make them through upgrades. These upgrades may include upgraded shipyards or new technology depending on the mod you're playing. These upgrades will become expensive though, so a robust economy is required if your strategy is to use multiple SSDs. If you would love an Empire War video that focuses on building an economy in your campaigns, let me know in the comments down below. Secondly, SSDs can take a long time to build and you will have to protect the shipyard while it's being constructed. Before you commit a significant amount of resources to a ship, you must build it in a place where it can be completed without incident. And unfortunately, not all planets are capable of building Dreadnought class shipyards, which means you don't have a lot of options in terms of where you can build SSDs. If your only Dreadnought class shipyard is in the front lines, you're at risk of losing your time and money investment. Your job as a commander is to choose which risks to take. However, placing a fleet to defend your shipyards could potentially dissuade any invaders in the short term. But what if the enemy is building an SSD instead? Well, the easiest way to deal with enemy SSDs are to destroy the opponent's shipyards before the ship can be completed. You can tell if an enemy is building an SSD because the text will appear in the top left of the galactic map. While you won't be told where the SSD is being built, it informs you of the type of SSD and how long until it is completed. This will be useful to players who are privy to where certain SSDs can be built on the galactic map. But be warned, there are certain upgrades and heroes that can speed up the production process of that enemy SSD. So unfortunately, time will be against you. Either way, for your case, Dreadnought class shipyards should be built away from the front line, giving you the space and time to finish construction. Once construction is complete, congratulations, you are officially a galactic superpower, able to contend with the most influential of the Star Wars factions. Unfortunately, a ship of this size can paint a target on your back as the fleet is suddenly more threatening to the enemy. Your enemies will be looking to catch your SSD unaware and your job as a commander is to prevent that and by doing so you have to use your SSD to support your fleet and vice versa your fleet has to support your SSD. This comes with a bit of practice so we're going to show you how to do it a little bit later on in the video. If you're using such a valuable asset like the SSD don't send it in to attack an unknown enemy. In the translated words of one of the history's greatest generals, Sun Tzu, victorious warriors win first, then battle. Defeated warriors will go to battle first, then seek to win. In layman terms, know what your plan is before you go. You can do that by sending spy droids to enemy territories, so you know what enemy fleets are there. And with that information, you can tailor your fleet to counter the enemy. We actually went into this in a lot more detail in one of our previous videos. So if you want to learn the best ways to prep for battles in Empire War, why not check out this video appearing on the info card right now. When you drop your SSD into battle, make sure you bring a ton of anti-missile defense units as well as carriers for fighter defense. Your SSD will kill everything else as long as you keep it operational. Despite the SSD having a ton of shield and hull hit points, it's not invincible, so make sure you position your defensive ships in front of it so it doesn't take too much damage. The unit's going to be huge, so it's going to take a ton of damage from loads of other smaller ships at all different angles. So you have to make sure fighters like interceptors are taking out bombers that are trying to do a bombing run on your SSD. And other ships like Victory 1, which have a lot of missile deployments, are being countered by anti-missile units like the CR-90. Speaking of position though, let's get into specifics. Your SSD is covered in guns and long-range weaponry. 
So it is best sitting in one spot and firing all its guns in all directions. Therefore, your SSD should be in the middle of your battle line, with all guns facing various different enemies. To micromanage the direction your ship is facing, select it, put your cursor in the middle of the ship, hold right click and a small green arrow should pop up. Move your cursor into the direction you want your SSD to face and then release the right click. You may have to do this two or three times as it doesn't always register and if the green arrow isn't appearing when you're right clicking on the unit, just move your cursor around in a circle and it should just pop up. Next, place defensive crafts around your SSD. Small ships may slip through and have a shot at your prized possession. If your SSD is going to hold out for the entire battle ahead, you need to mitigate as much incoming damage as possible. Speaking of damage mitigation, let's talk about target saturation. For those of you who haven't watched our prior videos, you probably won't know what that means. The quick rundown is, it's a strategy of overwhelming your enemy with numbers, preventing your opponent from focusing down your important ships. So, if we're going to use this method, you need to place your remaining ships in between your SSD and the enemy. It is imperative you do not separate your ships at this point. Because remember, you need your fleet to cover the SSD and you need the SSD to cover the fleet. And again, you're gonna have to expect to take losses in these battles because your enemy is bringing enough firepower to take down your SSD. So, if it is going to survive, something else needs to take those hits instead, which is why missile defense and reinforcements are so important. As long as your SSD is firing all its guns, rest assured you're pretty much doing the best job you can. So you're probably wondering to yourself, why am I having to lose smaller ships which cost me credits just to keep this massive invincible ship alive? Well, it's true, the SSD is going to take a lot more firepower to fully take it down. But in certain Empire War mods, like Thrawn's Revenge or Fall of the Republic, the way an SSD behaves in terms of shields and hull are different. In these mods, the damage to the SSD is persistent and carries on from battle to battle. This is a massive nerf to SSDs because before you could just win a battle, barely alive and just drop it into another map and it would be full health. This update in particular forces the player to have to be more protective of bigger ships like this. So if your SSD does become disabled or becomes ineffective in combat, you really should retreat. But it's not all doom and gloom though. This does apply to the enemy AI as well. And the SSDs do self-repair 10% of their shields and hull every week, providing you have the credits to pay for it. The price for this is 5% of the unit's total cost. For example, if you have a 40,000 credit SSD at 80% health, you must pay 2,000 credits for two weeks to fully repair your Dreadnought, totaling 4,000 credits. But this repair mechanic also works for your enemy, so if you have them on the ropes, press for the advantage. Just be careful not to get caught in a trap the further you advance. Remember, if you push too far, you won't have a resupply line of units. Stranding what forces you have behind enemy lines is devastating. This is especially dangerous if you have an SSD in the fleet, as the enemy can now choose to engage and disengage you at will. In terms of where you should station your SSD, these massive ships excel in defensive roles. If your attack fleets are capable enough, your SSD would be better utilized in choke points on the galactic map. Dreadnought class ships have the ability to drastically increase the cost of an invasion by enemy forces. Destroying an SSD is no small task, and having your SSD in a defensive position will force your enemy to divert a larger portion of their forces if an invasion is going to happen. For this reason, SSDs are known to control entire sectors, if stationed at a choke point, because it acts as a significant barrier to entry. If you are attacked while you have your SSD in orbit, it should once again be in the back of the formation with all guns facing the enemy. If you are attacked while you have your SSD SSD in orbit, the enemy has most likely brought enough firepower to take it down. So, once again, it should be in the back of the formation with all guns facing the enemy when the battle starts, and destroy as many ships as you can before retreating. While sticking around to kill more enemies is good, it would be better to have your fully operational SSD regroup with reinforcements to wipe out the enemy fleet in the final battle for the planet. This tactic has been mentioned in our previous videos and has been explained as defensive depth or maneuver defense. This is by having a fighting retreat against the enemy as they take over the planet. 
Once they do so, try to find a way to block off all exit points from the planet they've just captured. By surrounding the invading fleet, they won't be able to receive reinforcements, and this will force them to retreat or be eaten away by your counterattacks. If it's not obvious enough, don't lose your SSDs. They take significant investments in time and money and are worth almost every single winnable battle. In conclusion, use your SSD to win the war, not just the battle. For more in-depth tactical Empire War videos, subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And those are the best tactics on how to use your SSDs. If you want more in-depth tactical videos about Empire War, why not check out this video appearing right here now.